All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. I see we have a pretty good group of people online. Um, afterwards, there will be an opportunity to ask questions. You can either type them in or you can, um, I can unmute you and you can talk. Um, if you have something you want to say during the meeting, there's a way to raise your hand down at the bottom of your control panel and to ask a question. And I'll try to pay attention um, and try and stop along the way. And um, that's not it. Where is my, oops. Oh, isn't that nice? Um, oh, well. Oh, I see why. We're all taking a few minutes to get to know each other while I'm letting my file download. Um, just as a way of introduction, it's, um, it's just going to take a minute for it to download. My name is Mike Devlin. I'm with Keller Williams, Silicon Valley Realty. And uh, I wanted to put together this sort of an introductory workshop to develop a plan for social media marketing for 2012. Um, oh boy. Pastor, 50 seconds. We can watch it count down. And why don't I do this while we're waiting? For those of you that are online, um, what I'm going to do is, where is it? For those of you that are online, back, back, back. This is hard to do. Does that say get link to file? Send. All right, there we go. Control C, Chrome's, go to webinar. Over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm pasting in the chat. <laughs> um, a link you should see. I can't really see what's over on that side, but it should be a link to the um, um, handout for today's class. Otherwise, you're going to have to ask me for it. Um, more closing in social media, what I wanted to concentrate on today was Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. Plus. Um, LinkedIn is big, it's huge, and it's for business. The reason why I'm not covering that now is that in order to really get anything out of LinkedIn, you have to buy the paid system, the professional system. The lim there's a lot of limits on the free one. And knowing real estate agents as I do, the idea of buying the paid system sort of bothers people. So I'm going to um, I'm going to save that for something else. But Facebook, Twitter, and Google Plus. Um, Facebook, Google Plus is relatively new. We're going to take a little bit of a look at that. But um, looking at Facebook, more than 50% of all the users log on daily. The average user has 130 fin friends. There are 200 billion posts linked and commented on per day. One of the things that happened in early of 2011 is that Facebook was responsible for more clicks to websites than Google search. Maybe I should say that again. More people were going to websites as a result of links they saw on Facebook than were going to websites by searching on Google. Um, that's for, just in case you're wondering whether or not you need to have a presence, 200 billion posts, the average user is connected to 80 different community pages, groups, and events. Twitter is 121 million. We'll talk more about that. There's a billion tweets every day. 460 new accounts are created. I'm going to spend a little more time on specifics with Twitter because my experience has been that's the one that most real estate agents have no idea what to do with or what's going on or how or why. Um, most people are already on Facebook. Google Plus is relatively new. Just because it's Google doesn't mean it's going to last. 
uh, Google Buzz, Google Wave are, are examples of Google things that didn't make it. Google has a lot of very successful products and some very unsuccessful ones. Um, the, the jury's out on Google+, Plus, but there's things about Google+, Plus that you need to understand um, that are important, even if you're not really using Google+, Plus, um, uh, consistently. Activity on Facebook, more than 900 million objects that people interact with, pages, groups, events, and community pages. 80 community pages is the average, 250 million photos every day. Um, people install more than 20 million apps every day. Now, it's true that a lot of those are games. Um, and, and gift apps and things like that. But more than 500 million people use an app. Um, seven million apps and websites are integrated with Facebook. Do you have a website, and does your face does your Facebook um, page integrate with your website? Do you have one of the boxes that shows your Facebook posts and the people that are fans of your Facebook page? Do you have a like button on your Facebook on your website? Do you have share when you do a post? If you have a blog, do you have uh, links at the bottom that say that they can share it on Facebook or like it on Facebook or recommend it on Facebook? Um, if you don't, you're missing a lot of opportunities. Um, and more than 350 million active users currently access Facebook through mobile devices. If you don't have a smartphone, you probably need to get one. And, and when because it's very difficult to to use Facebook and for that matter Twitter and even Google Plus and get the most out of it unless you're able to do things on the fly, which means mobile. By the way, another thing to consider when we're going to talk about email and um, the way in which real estate agents communicate, how many people, how many of your customers and clients are reading your communications on a handheld device, on a cell phone? Um, as opposed to reading your communications on a big desktop PC. The, the vast majority of younger people are using phones to read email. If you're doing email marketing, how is your email formatted? Is it formatted to fit on a cell phone, or are you using big HTML templates with logos and pictures of homes in the background that don't go through a mobile phone? Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. I, I hope you don't mind that I'm going to go a little fast. But um, Google Plus versus Facebook, those are the two big giants. Twitter's got their own little niche, but I'm going to talk a little bit about them. Um, this is just some information on the demographics, but Google Plus skews towards the 18 to 34-year-olds. And the other thing about Google Plus that's, that's good to note is 32% of the people using it have a household income of more than $100,000 as opposed to only 23% of Facebook searchers. Now, what we're really talking about, and we're going to go through some of the theory of what you're doing in social media, because a lot of times when I talk to real estate agents about social media, they don't seem to have really a plan. One of the things we're talking about is branding. Branding is not your logo. It's not your company name. And I know this will come as a surprise. It's not your picture. Right, because so isn't that usually it's a picture of the agent standing in front of a for sale sign, jumping oftentimes up in the air in front of the sign, holding a trophy, right, while they're jumping in the air. Um, branding is what people say about you once you've left the room. People, it's what people think about you. And one of the so by when we're talking about social media, we're talking about having an opportunity to promote or to communicate your brand. It's also about building relationships. You know, when people talk about social media versus traditional marketing, in, in traditional real estate, it's about leads and it's about converting the lead into a client. Um, that is our goal. But in social media, what we're talking about is conversations. And the lead is the beginning of conversation with somebody, and converting means to continue that conversation. And we're gonna, and it's also to bring about top of the mind awareness. Real estate agents are getting deals from Google Plus, from Twitter, from Facebook, either from interacting with past customers and clients, their sphere of influence, or getting recommendations. Community involvement and an opportunity to contribute, people that are doing things that are beneficial to the community and contributing are more likely to do better on social media. Um, 
we all have a circle of influence and a circle of concern. What we're really talking about here, if if you've been around in real estate a long time and you've ever taken a real estate marketing class, they always start with your center of influence, your sphere of influence. We're really talking about the same thing, only on steroids. And you need to look at those people the same way you would look at people um, that are in your sphere of influence. This is not a silver bullet type of a solution, but simply another tool that you would use in reaching potential customers and clients. In other words, you still ought to have a newsletter, you still ought to send postcards, you still ought to make phone calls, you still ought to do email, you still ought to be involved in community events, you ought to talk to people face to face, but this is something that ought to be part of your plan. People do not want to be sold, they want to interact and be heard. You can't control the conversation but you can participate in it. The best metaphor for working social media is to think of a holiday party, right? Let's say some friends invite you to a party, and you show up wearing your company clothes, right? You've got your name badge. You've got your business cards in one pocket. You've got flyers for a property in one of your pockets. You've got personal brochures, and you walk up, and you see a group of people sitting around eating, you know, hors d'oeuvres and drinking, and they're talking about football. And you nudge into the conversation, and you say, hi, my name's Mike. I'm in real estate. Have you, I had, do you know anybody who's looking to buy a fixer-upper? I just listed this beautiful home in Blossom. Do you understand? Then you go to the next group, and they're talking about gardening, and you start handing out your do you understand you're not going to be invited to any more parties, right? And although, and yet that's the method that many real estate agents take when they go to social media. And people don't, and, and the, night, the difference between social media and the real party, it's harder for them to drag you out of that Christmas party. It's really easy for them to make you disappear from a social media. Um, it's one in many broadcast marketing, the uh, goal of this is to meet people one-on-one. -on -one. You can't sell a house over Facebook yet. Right? I, I, I've had agents say, well, you can do digital, you know, and they, you're going to, the idea is to get them to come into the office or to make an appointment with you. Um, and the three R's, you have to be relevant, real, and responsive. I'm going to talk a little more about what that means, and that's the goal is to develop a relationship. In general, there are five strategies. You need to be active. Now, by active, that does not simply mean that you post. It means that you interact. One of the things I'm going to talk about as a general rule of thumb on Facebook is that for every post you make, you should have a minimum of three to ten comments or interactions on other people's posts. This, I, I know, is counterintuitive to many real estate agents, right? Because the idea is to push the message and push the message and push the message, but if you don't interact with people, they're not going to listen to you. Um, you have to be interesting, and I'm going to talk about some ways to do that. Once I'm through with the slides, we're going to go online, and I'm going to show you some of the tools that you can use, and we're going to log into Facebook and do some things like that. You need to have interesting content to share, and I'll talk about how to do that. You should be humble. The you know the I'm the the best. I am the top selling, hardest working, smartest, most modest real estate agent. Right, um, that those kinds of things that sometimes I hear real estate agents saying on listing presentations and in marketing material um, should not be there. Be unprofessional. That doesn't mean you have to be crass. You know, you shouldn't talk about religion, politics, sex, and some just like the normal things. But they don't want to just hear about real estate. You understand, think of the party, you have to do, you, 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 when somebody, if you ask somebody, what do you do for a living, and they say, well, I'm an auto mechanic, and you talk about that, what are they going to do eventually? They're going to ask you, what do you do, right? And so the idea is not to be um, a completely professional face. And to be honest, this is, um, so I know that telling people to be themselves is sometimes bad advice, but the idea is to try and, and project your genuine self. Um, the real estate industry and social media. 79% of real estate, 84% of real estate agents say they're using social media. 79% Facebook, 48% Twitter. And then notice it drops out. This was done 
before Google Plus really got started. Um, this, these next few slides come from the recently released California Association of Realtors Survey of Home Buyers and Sellers for 2011. And some facts that they had about buyers, 59% of their found their agent online, 51% Googled their agent. One of the reasons we're going to talk about Google Plus is because when people, it gives you the opportunity to control your Google profile, which is what Google will default to if somebody Googles your name. If you, put, if you Google your name, what do you see? And you want to have some ability to control that. 52% of the buyer said they use social media in the home buying process. 93% said they want to get information through social media. Um, notice those numbers are much higher than the ones of real estate agents using it. Um, how did you use social media? This is for buyers such as Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, etc. in your home buying process. 33% for finding an agent. 26% video tours, 24% looked at agent Facebook pages. Do you have a Facebook page and what does it look like? Home buying tips, comments on the neighborhood, neighborhood styles, those are just some of the things that if you're having a Facebook page, you'd want to have maybe home buying tips, comments on neighborhoods, lifestyle things, and um, videos in videos. Uh, about sellers, 66% of the sellers surveyed in 2011 said they found their real estate agent online. 77% said they use social media in the selling process. Um, and these are, I, I can't believe that MySpace is still there, but it's, it's, it's still there. Um, this is something that I found very interesting. They wanted, they asked buyers and sellers how they wanted to communicate with the agent. Now, preferred is what they said, actual is what they got. 37% said they wanted to get phone calls, but that's what half of the agents did. Text message is what 32% said they wanted, only 1% did that. Again, we're back to do you have a smartphone and are you good at sending text messages? 21% said they wanted Twitter direct messaging, I would assume, or Facebook messaging, and none of the agents in the survey actually did that. I've had people that I've worked with that I've hired that from beginning to end, all communication was done through Facebook messaging. There was never an email. In colleges today, if, if you go to a college, they're not giving the students each other's email because email is passe. It's so 90. Right, I'm just telling you, it's 90s. They don't give pe they give people their Facebook account. I've already had people sit, do this a number of times where they say, "Well, my, this is my name. I'm on Facebook. Just send me a message." Right, and you can see that most age and in person, um, <laughs> they don't want to see us. Isn't that what they're only 6% wanted to actually see us? We're, we're very sensitive, aren't we? So um, are you, do you understand Twitter and Facebook? Now, do you understand if you're dealing with first-time home buyers, 20, we're in Silicon Valley. Like I've sold homes to people that worked at Google. They did not want phone calls, right? That was not their thing. The idea of a fax machine, that just, they, guys, they don't understand. You don't want to say, here's my fax, I'll fax it to you. Right, you understand? They'll, they'll they'll think you're they'll think you're just not their kind of person, right? So you need to be able to use Twitter and Facebook messaging, if for no other reason. That's how your clients want to communicate. Sellers, the communication gap. What was your preferred method, um, and what was the actual method? In person, three percent five. Again, they didn't want to see it. Facebook was the preferred. Um, I'm trying to figure out which one. Actual. So more agents were using Facebook for sellers. Telephone um, was, oh, am I missing someone here? Let's look at email. The, the biggest difference that I see is text message. You see that's the second group of bars from the right. 64% said they would prefer text messaging. 1% of the agents used it. Um, instant messaging, 26% said they wanted it. Nobody used it. 8% said they wanted telephones, and 47% uh, used it. We're old school, you call them, 
right? You know, I'm just going to call them and talk to them. Um, they want text messages, right? Um, I'm just saying. Uh, time spent on Facebook, uh, that's sort of a gratuitous graphic. Homepage and news feed is where 27% uh, of the time is spent. Profiles, photos, apps and tools, and all other is 25%. That 25% would include pages of, of, of companies, and I'll talk about that. How often should you post? According to surveys that have been done on how many times people post and how many likes they get, just so we're clear, when you post something, the goal is to get people to do one of three things, to like it, to share it, or to comment, right? That's the goal. So what they do is they look at people and they look at how often do they post and how many times do people like their posts. And they notice at the very top, where you get the most likes is when you're posting every other day. Now, we're talking about clients here, right? We're talking about marketing posts. When we get into Facebook, there's what you're doing with your family and friends, and that interactive action may be quite different. But you need to be able to screen. In other words, if you're sending all your potential clients eight or nine things a day on Facebook, they're probably not seeing them anymore because they've blocked you, right, or they've made you become invisible. You want it for clients and prospects, not family and real friends. Clients and prospects a post every other day is what the surveys. When are most people um, reading their Facebook at noon? Why many businesses block access to social networks while they're working? So on their cell, they have to, they're doing it on their smartphones and they're doing it at lunchtime or when the boss isn't looking. And what day are, is the best day? Saturday. One of the things that, that they found, this has to do with the metrics. The, the one in the top right is probably the most useful that there's a huge surge on, on the weekend of business to consumer interaction on Facebook. And what's interesting is that if you look at when people are actually posting, most businesses post during the week, Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, but most people are reading, their, uh, are, are on it on the weekend, and that's where the readership is much higher. Isn't this fun? Google Plus. Uh, what is it? It's a new social networking service from Google. It enables sharing, status updates, photos, and links. You can share it with different groups of people. How about this as an idea? Let's say you don't have a blog because you don't really know what to do with the blog, and, but you'd kind of like to have a blog. This could be your blog, right? And you, when I get to it, you can see how you could use Google Plus as a blog. The features that Google Plus has are circles, hangouts, sparks, and huddles. Does that sounds fun, doesn't it? Um, the features of Google Plus circles, and I, we're gonna, I'm going to log into my Google Plus page, and I'm going to show you um, a little bit about how that works. But if this had been in existence before Facebook, there might not be a Facebook, right? Because it's a lot easier to use. It's more user friendly. They've generated a lot, and the idea of circles in Facebook, we have friend lists. Now. I'm going to talk about that when we get to Facebook. That would be, by the way, the number one tip for using Facebook is to create friend lists. And I'll show you how, how you can do that. And according to Facebook, 95% of users do not have friend lists. And under the new system, Facebook is sort of making lists for you. But that's because nobody would do it on their own. Less than 5% of the people using Facebook had created friends lists. But Google Plus is arranged around circles. Examples might be past clients, um, potential buyers, potential sellers, other real estate agents, uh, affiliates, people in the industry that you might want to collect information from that might have updates and market information and selling tips and marketing tips and things like that. So circles is where your friends are categorized. And they, they start with the categories of friends, family, followings, acquaintances, et cetera, but you can build your own. You can categorize clients. This is the real estate tip using this feature. Past clients, they're obvious ones. If you had a regular database, what categories would you put people in? Hangouts. 
video chats. Facebook started this with a program called Skype where people can talk to each other and Skype with each other. I've had Skype for many years. Most people do not have Skype, and they don't know what it is or how to use it. But you can create a video chat on Google Plus for up to 10 people pretty much instantly, and you can share things, links back and forth. Now, when I say this, I sometimes real estate agents roll their eyes, and you know, I'm glad no one has anything to throw, but even listing presentations. Now, I know that people are going to say, well, no, I want to be there, and I want to be in their face, and I want to see them. And But do you realize that as a pre-listing presentation, there are, in Silicon Valley, some people that would like to use the Internet first? I'm just saying, right? You understand? That may not be our preference, but it might be theirs. Um, a little home buying seminar, home selling seminar, short sales seminar, you can do this on, on uh, Google+. Plus. Yes, Diane? Yes, you can make YouTube videos and play them. You can. The question was for those on online. You, can you record it ahead and play it? Yeah, you can make videos and play them. You can post videos, right? That the whole video thing is another class. Real estate agents can share video tours with clients, see their reactions, and immediately address questions the clients have. That you can watch tours of listings while you're all looking at each other. How many people have devices that have cameras on them? Most people. Right, smartphones, uh, laptops, um, that's a cool thing. Um, Sparks, it allows users to get information about content they are interested. It's like a search engine. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that, but one of the things you need to do to be effective in social media is have something to share. And in order to have something to share, you have to have like nets that are out there scooping information that would be relevant to your consumers that just comes to you every day that you don't have to actively go out and look for. And so you can create this, really you can track industry news using this feature so that when you log in, stuff for you to post on Facebook, stuff to post on Twitter, stuff to post on Google+, things to put on your blog, things to talk to your clients about, just show up every day. Huddle. This is a group testing feature. You can cre You can send text to groups of people. Um, it allows agents to communicate with certain groups on the go. It's possible to communicate with just one client. You can use Google Plus to post something to just one person, a group of people, a circle of people, a list of people. Um, that's one of the cool